This is the second section of chapter three on representations of data. And this section is on box plots. So box plots you would have met at GCSE Maths. And a box plot is a graphical way of representing quartiles and the largest and smallest values from a set of data. Now, what's new about box plots is that we can actually represent outliers on the box plot by representing them with crosses. So this is what a box plot would look like where we have outliers represented. So remember, this line here represents the smallest value. This line here represents the largest value. Now all of this will be drawn against the scale. Lower quartile here, Q1, upper quartile here, and the median Q2 in the middle. The width of this box here is going to be the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1. And if we've got any outliers that are below, then they would be represented as an X on this side, which means that this bar stops at the value above the outlier. And here you can see we've got two upper outliers represented on this box plot. So the top bar here, this largest value, won't be the largest value that's in our data set, but the third largest value. So that's where we stop there. Example three, and in part A, we want to draw a box plot for the data on blood glucose levels of females from example one. Now the data is here and we've already worked out these values. So I'm not gonna work them out again. You can go back and have a look at example one from section 3.1, but we worked out Q1 to be 3.2, Q2 to be 3.8, and Q3, the upper quartile, we worked out to be 4.0. And I can see the largest and smallest values, smallest 1.7, largest 5.1. Now, when we did that question, we marked the 1.7 as an outlier. Okay, so maybe I'll highlight with a different color as a highlight uh, as the outlier. So our smallest value on our box plot is actually going to be 2.2. So we've got some graph paper here. First thing we need to do is to draw a scale. So here's my scale here. Um, so let's put these values in. So at 1.7, I need to draw a cross. Then the lowest value is going to be 2.2. So I'm going to put a line at 2.2. So let's put a line here. And then I'm going to put the lines in for my uh, lower quartile, median and upper quartile, and then my largest value. So I'm going to have 3.2, which is going to be a line here. Then 3.8, which will be a line here. Then 4.0, so that'll be a line here. And then my largest value is 5.1, which is going to be a line about here. So now I can draw my box in the middle like this and then join them up. And there we go, there's my, there's my box plot. And I'll just label it up as this is my box plot for the female glucose levels. Because now when I go on to part B, uh, I've now got the blood glucose levels for 30 males. The results are summarized here. Um, and it says an outlier is an observation that falls either 1.5 times the interquartile range above or 1.5 times the interquartile range below. Given that there is only one outlier for the males, draw the box plot for this data on the same diagram as the one for the females. So let's start first of all by working out what that outlier is. So we'll start by find, finding if there are any out, lower outliers. So that's going to be Q1, 3.6 minus 1.5 times the interquartile range. And the interquartile range is going to be 4.7 minus 3.6. So that's 1.95. So, um, so let's have a look here. I don't have all the values, only a summary. But if the lowest value is 1.4, and that's less than 1.95, there's my outlier. That says there's only one, so I don't need to do 
any further calculations but just to check I'm now going to work out if there are any upper lower line uh, outliers I'm not expecting there to be any so that will be 4.7 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range now that's 6.35 and as I expected there shouldn't be any outliers there are the largest values 5.2 so um, confirms what I, my suspicions were so now we're going to transfer this information with the outlier on to this grid here so first of all this lower outlier we're going to mark with a cross on 1.4 so that will be here okay so now these are the other values plotted on here 3.6 for the lower quartile 4 for the median 4.7 for the upper quartile and then the highest value is 5.2 here so we can complete our our box then the line here now what we're missing is the lowest value now the lowest value that's not an outlier is going to be 1.95 so we go down to 1.95 now whether that's in this data set or not we don't know but this just indicates this is the lowest value it can be. So we're going to go to 1.95, which is going to be our line there. And then we just join that up and indicate that this is our box plots for the males. Part C asks us to compare the blood glucose levels for the males and females. Now, when you do any comparison, you must always compare these two things. A measure of spread. Now, in this case, that's going to be the interquartile range. In other questions, that may be the standard deviation or the variance and a measure of location. Now, in this case, we're going to be using a measure of the central location. So we'll use the median. So let's have a look at these box plots so that we can make those comparisons. So my comparisons are that the interquartile range for the women is lower than the males so this box isn't as wide as the males are I don't need to write the values down it might be useful to compare the values and the median for the males this line here is just slightly higher than the females now when you do questions like this it's often useful as well when you write your comparisons to make sure you talk about the context of the question so maybe a better answer might be the interquartile range for the blood glucose levels for the females is lower than the males and then the median for the blood glucose levels for the males is higher than the females so you should now be able to do exercise 3b on page 45 of the textbook